The Monsters of the Book of Enoch. That's what we're going to talk about today on the Cub Cooker Supernatural Podcast. What does this story and mythology mean for us? Should you include it with your biblical literature? Is it all the same as the literature in Genesis? Does it tie in perfectly? That's for you to decide. But today we're going to go through and talk about the Leviathan and the Behemoth, which is present within the biblical literature as well. However, we have a very unique description and presentation of it in the book of Enoch. So as we get into this, welcome everyone as you're jumping in the comments. If you've never joined the Cub Cooker Supernatural Podcast, then hi. My name is Jacob Cooker, but my friends call me Cub, and you should too. Uh, I'm a spiritual creator, mentor, and seeker of the universal Christ. I explore esoteric concepts of faith, spirituality, paranormal, and mythology. Um, and I do that uh, because my mission is to help you manifest yourself through holistic, original spirituality. Um, and what does that mean? That means that we create a mythos about ourselves, a set of agreements about self that we then live from. And we do that through our thoughts, emotions, actions, and our energies. So if you like that, you're in the right place. Uh, we are an all-inclusive community uh, all different faiths, religions, walks of life, races, orientations. We don't care uh, as long as you're here in love, light, and respect to others in the comments and in the community. So uh, just keep that in mind with an open mind. Getting into the content today, we are looking at uh, Book of Enoch, and we're gonna. I'm gonna go ahead and read quite a bit from Chapter Three, the Third Parable. Uh, so if you're following along in the book of Enoch, we're in the book of the parables, which is chapter three now, and we're on the third parable. Now these parables and the way the book of Enoch is really split up is you can't really tell if it's past, present, or future. Um, most of what it deals with is the great flood, the judgment of the angels. Now, uh, a lot of what our more modern apocalyptic literature that we have, specifically like Book of Revelations, deals with um, kind of our understanding of humanity as sinful and the judgment of humanity. But if you look at things like Book of Enoch um, and some more of the ancient understandings and mythologies, it wasn't so much that humanity is sinful, but it was actually that the gods that sinned against them brought sin to humanity and those gods or angels, fallen angels or watchers, as they're called in the book of Enoch, uh, are actually the ones that are being judged by God or what is considered the uh, eternal Lord of spirits. So um, that's kind of where we're jumping in to this parable version. And the parables are, um, I think, pretty hard to follow personally uh, because I can't quite tell who's who and what's what. So, you know, that's... That's Book of Enoch for you, but uh, I do like Book of Enoch because it's got some really beautiful stuff in it, uh, and it helps open our mind and our understanding of what we're reading in the biblical text. So, getting into verse 1, chapter 3, it says, And I began to speak the third parable concerning the righteous and elect. Blessed are ye, ye righteous and elect, for glorious shall be your lot, and the righteous shall be a light of the sun, and the elect in the light of eternal life. The days of their life shall be unending, and the days of the holy without number. But they shall seek the Lord of light and find righteousness with the Lord of spirits. There shall be peace and righteousness in the name of the eternal Lord. So, and I'm going to get really hot really quick. I had this on because I was running around doing chores, and I normally wear my tie-dye shirt, but i um, trying to do a lot of chores today, so... It's Friday and it's been snowing. So in verse seven, it says, as this uh, and after this, it shall be said of the holy in heaven that they should seek out the secrets of righteousness, the heritage of faith. Um, Enoch uses a lot of language that for all intents and purposes is so far removed from our modern languages and our modern understandings. What is a heritage of faith? I mean, that would be like a tradition of faith. That would be literally like a lineage of faith um, or like, um, again, a mythos of faith as, as we get into this. So um, that is certainly not a term we use nowadays. Um, so again, for the purposes of this study, 
Uh, I wish I could tell you what Book of Enoch meant, but I'm just here to present it because, wow, it's it gets wild. Um, and it's fun to read through, and definitely there's parts of it that fit seamlessly with the biblical literature. There's parts of it that challenge it, and there's parts of it that seem so out of time and so out of place. I can't understand why they're relevant whatsoever. Um, but th- again, that's not for me to decide. We have the text. I think it's amazing that we still have it, and I'm glad that we can read it together. So, uh, Verse 8, it says, For it has become bright as the sun upon the earth, and the darkness is past. Uh, so the heritage of faith has become bright as the sun upon the earth and the darkness has passed. This to me is representative of moving into a new age, an age of light rather than darkness and ignorance. You know, uh, I like to read things esoterically again, where it's not a literal thing, but more of a spiritual drama playing out, uh, that happens within each person happens within timelines or eons or prophetic periods. Um, Verse nine, and there shall be light that never ends, and to limit, uh, and to a limit of days they shall not come. For the darkness shall first have been destroyed, and the light of uprightness established, for even before the Lord of Spirits. In those days, mine eyes saw the secrets of the lightnings and the lights and the judgments they execute, and they lighten for a blessing or a curse as the Lord of Spirits willeth. Uh, this is one thing that I don't, this is where I lose continuity with biblical literature, not necessarily old Testament. This is very old Testament in feel, but especially with the modern or not the modern, but the, uh, the unique standalone message of Christ that I talk about here a lot. Um, I don't see that the divine Abba father, El Elyon, God Most High. I don't see that he curses. Uh, now you say, well, yeah, he does look at the Old Testament. Well, if you know my theory and my videos on Yaldabaoth, Yahweh, uh, the great dragon, the uh, in fact, in, in some cases can be considered the Satan um, or Hasatan in the Hebrew. Um, with that said, you can go back and watch those videos. Those are all on my YouTube channel. Everything's over at cubcooker.com, C-U-B-K-U-K-E-R.com. Uh, you can click on the YouTube icon. It'll take you over there. You can watch the Yalda Bayoth series and understand how and why I separate Old Testament completely from the New Testament. There's been a lot of stretching and, uh, and effort to try to tie the message of Jesus to the, the Hebrew literature. And while... I can see how, you know, he quoted a lot of that and fulfilled a lot of that prophecy. Sure. Um, Marvell. No, ma'am. Trying to chew on the door here every day. Um, My dogs are in the studio with me in case anyone's wondering. But um, so, you know, I really try to separate that because, again, I see that, that Christ had a standalone message, especially if you read the Gnostic Gospels. And it was a universal message of enlightenment and peace and ascension and understanding God within you, the kingdom within you, and what our purpose is on this planet as beings of light to help others ascend and grow spiritually uh, and create a literal and figurative and spiritual and esoteric new earth, uh, a new consciousness um, to move out of darkness, to uh, watch those things within us. Um, that, that should be cast into the darkness, be cast into the darkness and those things within us that want to move towards light and life and enlightenment, uh, ascend, if you will. Uh, a lot of this goes, you know, with the chakric understanding, uh, the, the layers of the human energy field, um, and ascending that the, you know, crucifixion of the lower levels, the fleshly levels, and then the ascension of the spiritual levels. So, you know, you can cross-reference and uh, try to, you know, justify this all day long with a bunch of different understandings. I'm just here to present them. But really the way that I simply read it is I understand the message of Christ to be a standalone universal message of love, peace, and enlightenment. Um, And really through him, through the message of the energy of the Christ, the Christ consciousness, the entity of the Christ, is the path to eternal life to um 
being a part of the divine fractal of God, being a co-creator within that creation. So with that said, I really do have to separate a lot of Enoch from the, the message of Christ. I do see that like he's in here, the Christ energy is here, but I don't see again how this divine Abba, Father, God, love, uh, energy I don't see how that sends a curse. Like, I don't know. And maybe it's just a curse against absolute darkness because like even the sun shining is like a curse against darkness, theoretically, right? Uh, thank you guys for the roses, by the way. I appreciate you guys being here. If you have questions or comments, drop them down below. But again, if you've never been here before, we, we get into some cool stuff here. Very open-minded, deeper esoteric uh, stuff with spirituality and biblical literature as well as other eastern uh, uh faith systems and spirituality so um big mary thank you for being here uh military five thank you for being here uh you guys are awesome thank you for the gifts today i really appreciate that so but as we approach further in this we're going to get into some uh revelation of the beast here um and of course we're going to look at how that ties to revelation and there's a lot of beast mythology even within biblical literature that a lot of times we just don't we go oh you know really is that is that really what they were talking about but uh it's pretty clear here that there are two monsters they're literally called monsters in this translation uh birthed out of this so um of course marvell's got to get the squeak toy today uh for the darkness shall first have been destroyed in the light of uprightness established forever before the Lord of spirits in those days, mine eyes saw the secrets of the lightnings and the lights and the judgments say execute. I got into that. Um, and there I saw the secrets of the thunder and how, when it resounds above the heaven, the sound thereof is heard. And he caused me to see the judgments executed on the earth, whether they be for well-being and blessing or for a curse, according to the word of the Lord of spirits. Again, getting into the curse. I, I don't know how I feel about that doesn't really matter how I feel, but um, hold on just a second, guys. Wrong toy to play with. <laughs> you have that one, and I get to use that one. And I'm back. Squeak toy had to go bye-bye. Um, how it resounds above in the heaven, and the sound thereof is heard. And he caused me to see the judgments executed on the earth. Whether they had been for well-being and blessing or for a curse according to the word of the Lord of Spirits. After that, all the secrets of the lightnings and the lightnings were shown to me, and they lighten for blessing and for satisfying. In the year 500, in the seventh month, on the 14th day of the month in the life of Enoch. In that parable, I saw how a mighty quaking made heaven and earth to quake. And the host of the Most High and the angels and a thousand thousands and ten thousand times ten thousand were disquieted with great disquiet. And the head of days sat on the throne of his glory and the angels and the righteousness stood around him. And a great trembling seized me and fear took over me and my loins gave way and dissolved where my reins and I fell upon my face. And I, this is one of the most frustrating books to read, guys, because... Like, it doesn't make sense. This is not modern language. You know, basically he passed out. I mean, that's like, we'll just, yeah, he passes out. He He's he's freaking out here. Um, he's seeing stuff that none of us have seen or will see. Um, you know, and, and this is not taken as some sort of, um, you know, substance trip that he's on. This is like, this is uh, supposed to be a literal and, and spiritual journey that he's on like you know it, there's not even a real separation between you know sometimes he said he was taken in the spirit and then sometimes he says he was actually taken there so uh, i get the mind that it was like a spaceship that took him up and showed him all these things and then it was also like a consciousness download with all these secrets and then we basically get this huge gar gargled mess of a book of just his like what I would consider word vomit in a lot of places here of what he experienced. Uh, and did Enoch write this book? No, this is, I mean, it's considered pseudepigrapha where, uh, that means that someone else wrote it in his name, basically. Maybe it was written as 
uh, oral tradition was handed down or maybe a bunch of documents combined to say, hey, this was, you know, Enoch's full experience. Um, so I don't know. Uh, again, it's a wild, wild book. Um, but as we continue here, it says Michael sent, we're in verse 19 on chapter three, Michael sent another angel from among the holy ones and he raised me up. And when he had raised me up in spirit, my spirit returned for I had not been able to endure the look of this host and the commotion and the quaking of heaven. And Michael said unto me, why art thou disquieted with such a vision until this day lasted the day of his mercy? And he hath been merciful and long suffering towards those who dwell on the earth. And when the day and the power and the punishment and the judgment come, which the Lord of spirits hath prepared for those who worship not the righteous law and for those who deny the righteous judgment and for those who take his name in vain, that day is prepared for the elect and a covenant, but for sinners and inquisition. So here's another thing. This disagrees a lot with the message of Jesus. Um, Jesus talks about, you know, God's love. He talks about, and you get, may go, no, he doesn't look at revelation. Well, that's not Jesus talking. You know, that's, that's another very, very trippy text written that was allegedly attributed to John on the Isle of Patmos. And it's a bunch of stuff together that is this prophetic document very similar to this book of Enoch. Um, so is this the prophecy of Yahweh? Possibly. Um, I can see that, you know, if Enoch is standing there, he's standing before this like Lord of Spirits. I could see that maybe being Yahweh that he's standing before, uh, that he's like, in this commune with um, somehow being taken around by the angel yet he sees this Lord of spirits and then you see that Christ says no man has seen the father like it doesn't even say you know oh Enoch saw the father but you know, he talks about him being in spirit and in truth um, so again I don't I don't see that this is necessarily talking about the father that Christ came to speak of. This is where you can really, and I'm just going to be honest guys, you can really even go as far as to say like Jesus didn't come to corroborate any of this. He came to like literally reveal a different kingdom, a new kingdom, um, a, a spiritual eternal kingdom, not one that was based on these judgments and these uh, apocalypses and all of these things that these extraterrestrial, vengeful gods we're trying to bring so um tj hey brother just got here quick recap on what you're talking about we're about to get into the monsters in enoch uh and really i'm just kind of explaining why i struggle with enoch i love enoch it's such a cool book and it's opened up my mind but like if you're looking for answers in enoch or the old testament even i think this kind of like ties to that or even revelation you're going to really struggle. Yeah, we're about to talk about Leviathan and Behemoth because they're both in here. You also see them in Job and in other uh, biblical canon books. So uh, a man in physical form called Jesus uh, won't be coming back uh, as a human being. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with that. Um, but I also, from the words of Christ, he fulfilled the prophecy that he said he was going to come back. He came back to his apostles. He re-manifests to them in his glorified body and now he's in he's in another place but we're supposed to have his spirit now and i think that that spirit those seeds of that spirit what people might call star seeds light workers those type of people uh have like fully received that or you know are in the process of fully receiving that light of christ like that actual light bringer um calling in their life to help this planet and so that's really Again, you guys know me that have been here. I, I break away from the biblical text. I'm not a biblical literalist. I try to understand all of this in context because we have thousands and thousands of scriptures that are thousands and thousands of years old. We have the Bible. We have other holy texts. And I want to understand what they all have to do with each other. That's part of why I'm here. And I'll spend my life trying to figure that out. Um, but I think that the message of Christ is the culmination of all of them, by the way. 
Um, I think that his message transcended all of these and called together the truth and the light and the way and the life. And that's why I am obsessed with bringing the universal Christ to people outside of Christianity or Judaism or uh, Islam or any any uh, tradition that might talk about the person of Jesus. I am more obsessed with revealing the entity, the energy, the consciousness of the Christ. And so I don't think I can go wrong with that, like with that mentality, because we don't have Jesus today. We don't have the person Jesus. I can't be saved through the person Jesus. The idea of him to the person, like through the person, I've always struggled with. I feel like it's through, um, I feel like it's through the consciousness, through the energy, through the entity. So yeah, through the frequency of love, absolutely. Um, so the message is in all of them, uh, to love and not hate, uh, and fight each other on religion or monotheism. Absolutely, Kelly, I, I agree with that. So uh, YG, YRG says, are they demonic? Um, so as we get into uh, these beasts, I don't know that they're demonic because in Job, he talks about observing them and he talks about how amazing God is or Yahweh really in Job is for making these creatures. Uh, Job is a mishmash too, where you have the, like the Elohim character and the Yahweh character. Uh, and if you go and read that, go look at the interlinear and actually look at the Hebrew of it. You're going to see multiple characters. You see Hasatan, Yahweh and Elohim, like this God of gods type figure, or like a, um, a multi multifaceted Godhead. Um, again, these are, it's why I love mythology because when you look at these as mythologies and like people are trying to understand the nature of reality and creation and the past, then it really opens up a treasure trove here of trying to understand what's really going on rather than trying to justify the literal interpretation of everything. And so as we get into this, I think that's what's, that's what's fascinating to me about the book of Enoch that we can kind of, uh, transcend any literal try, uh, attempts at understanding and move into the deeper esoteric understanding. So, uh, afterwards the judgment shall, shall take place according to his mercy and patience. Uh, and on that day were two monsters parted. Okay. So, um, again, the, the last parable was actually talking about the flood. A lot of people say, Oh, it's a coming thing. You know, this is a, prophetic book that hasn't happened and it's for a, a time later um and then we see it's the literal interpretation of the flood story played out again in enoch here and the judgment of the angels um and so here now we're at this time where there's more judgment you know unfolding um and it says that on that day two monsters parted a female monster, Leviathan, who I have behind me, and a male monster uh, named Behemoth. And so I'm going to go over here and I'm going to show you guys Behemoth. Of course, it's my interpretation of Behemoth, but I think it's cool. Uh, this is kind of the two-headed Behemoth here, but um, which it doesn't say that it's two-headed, but the AI, for some reason, decided two heads were necessary for this behemoth. But you can see it's two battling each other here. Um, and so we have um, Leviathan to dwell in the abyss of the ocean over the fountains of the waters. But the male is named Behemoth, who occupied with his breast a waste wilderness named Duadan on the east of the garden where the elect and righteous dwell. For my grandfather was taken up, the seventh from Adam, the first man whom the Lord of Spirits created. And I besought the other angel that he should show me the might of those monsters, how they were parted on one day and cast into the abyss of the sea and the other unto dry land of the wilderness." And he said to me, Thou son of man, herein thou dost seek to know what is hidden. So here you go. Son of man language being used again. We talk about Jesus said he was the son of man over and over and over and over. He never said that he was the son of God. He never said that he was 
uh, that he was God. He said that he was in the Father and the Father was in him. And he talked about being the Son of Man. Well, if you look up the literal interpretation of the Son of Man, it literally is humanity. Humanity. So again, the esoteric reading of the gospel, whenever Jesus is talking about himself, he is referring to humanity. Uh, again, that is not the literal interpretation. That is my esoteric understanding. You can go look up the definition of Son of Man and understand that at its core is is literally just humanity. And so I believe when he was saying the Son of Man this, the Son of Man that, all through the gospel that he was referring to humanity and your potential and my potential, by the way. He said, you'll do greater things than even I have done. And so what is this here? You know, wh what is the divine feminine, the divine masculine? This is a beast that's split, coming from one place, being thrown into the sea and thrown upon the wasteland, um, how does this correlate to revelation? How does it correlate to our own lives? Is this really like the demiurge split into the, the feminine and the masculine, uh, the demiurge being the Yahweh or Yaldabaoth type, uh, character where it's divine, but it's also confused. It's jealous. It's like God manifest in the flesh rather than God as spirit, uh, and kind of that unholy creature, just like, uh, the Nephilim. Uh, and am I trying to be blaspheming to God? No, I'm just saying God of the Old Testament does not make sense to me as the Father Christ was talking about. And so another interpretation you could take is that the only true God is the God of the Old Testament and the judgment, and you need to follow the law and all, or, you know, the religious law and all those things. Um, and then Jesus was actually coming to deceive people or um, the other way that I see it is that Jesus was actually coming to enlighten people and really speak out against that demi urge that, uh, God, um, in the flesh rather than God in the spirit. And so, and I'm not saying it was actually the God. It was like more of like divinity in the flesh is this mutated thing that is, you know, united with this sin almost. Um, and then, God in the spirit is pure and like you have to find him within in that purity and that quiet place rather than trying to do all of these things to find your divinity. I don't know. Again, that's just an esoteric thought about it. And you guys can even just see and think about the imagery of these beasts being split and then cast upon their, uh, their respective landscapes, if you will. So, uh, there would not be light without the darkness, uh, not good, not evil, uh, without bad, we can't appreciate good. You know, I, I mean, Kelly, I get that, but I don't really follow that. That's dualism and you run in, you're going to beat your head against a lot of walls with duality, uh, theory. You know, Jesus literally said in my father is light and there is no darkness at all. So if we're looking for the, the authentic Abba father, by whatever name you want to call him, uh, it's not judgment. It's not darkness. It's not evil. It is light. It is good. It is spirit. It is truth. And that's, that's the father that Christ spoke of in my humble opinion. And that's where I just take dualism and go, Nope, I'm not. Yeah. You know, I, I don't entertain that because I have an issue with trying to justify and that caused a lot of bad fruit in my life. So, um, didn't Lilith have something to do with these giants? Uh, yes, that is a mythology. That is not written in Enoch or Genesis. But that is in other stories, and we will get into that because here's another thing about mythologies. Genesis is full of a bunch of different ones. We had Sumerian, Babylonian, Egyptian, uh, Roman. We had... Um, Hebrew, all of these different cultures melding. And so while a lot of this is Hebrew literature in the Old Testament, a lot of the New Testament is kind of combining a lot. And then specifically in Christ, you have the the line of Melchizedek. There's been a lot of attempts to, to make sure that the line of Jesus is tied to the Davidic line when really all of the, the, the real revelations from it seem to come from the priesthood of Melchizedek. Uh, the esoteric and the magic side of the line of Christ rather than uh, trying to tie him uh, specifically to the Hebrew lineage. So with that said, I can't prove any of that. I'm just, I want you guys to be aware that 
who you listen to matters on this. Uh, TJ says, really fun listening to you, man. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, balance inside of us. Uh, balance inside of us is only possible when we activate light within us. Um, and just like I shared with um, the the story of Pandora's box, it was not a box at all. It was her, it was a vessel. Once she opened the vessel and looked within, the darkness actually fled because there was light within. And we're not told that story. We're just told, don't open the box. All these bad things will come out. But then we even lose the mythology of it and the esoteric side of it because we replaced it with a box out of wood rather than a clay vessel as we are made in the flesh in clay. And now we can break out of that by letting the darkness fly away and flee because it has no place in us. And then there's the verse, you know, that says, you know, if you say that you have no sin, then uh, the truth is not in you. Well, that's from First John, if I'm correct, uh, not from the Gospel of John. So, again, I look at the Gospels and everything else around it is an interpretation, a twisting or a manipulation, possibly, or even just a, an attempt at understanding the message of Christ. It's what we've been given through thousands of years of tradition. Um, and if you look at this, the history of the canonization of the Bible, you will never be able to read it as the un infallible word of God again. You will look at it as a beautiful document, a beautiful scriptural document that we can look at all the different sides of to try to understand the authentic message of the Christ. And then as you look into some Hindu literature and Buddhist literature, you see that message of the Christ as well. And you kind of start to like have eyes to see and ears to hear like, what am I really looking at? And that's, that's the digging I like to do. And that's where I've had to go in my walk. Um, and as you guys are here for this, uh, I think you have been enjoying it and I hope you continue to enjoy it. So I dig having someone to hear and discuss these things with. Thank you. Hey, Kelly. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, just Kelly, like I said, for me, um, the longer I tried to reconcile, like, you know, my humanity and my divinity, it just didn't work. Um, and I think that that's a problem. Like it says, you know, Jesus said, you can't put new wine skin in old wine skins or it'll burst them. And I was struck, like I had so much turmoil in me cause like something in me knew I was divine and I was a good, a good entity and that I loved God and I was one with God. But something kept telling me, like, no, you're sinful. No, you're in darkness. You're just you're in a, just worms in a bucket. Like, you don't deserve blah, blah, blah. And I got to tell you that duality is nothing but unaliving of the soul. Like, it just doesn't work. Uh, humanity's consciousness isn't made to, is not made to unify with that dualistic nature. It is made to transcend the flesh and move into a place of deep understanding and light and, and literal spiritual practice of manifesting light through your body. Like when you meditate, when you quiet yourself, when you breathe, when you actually go through your mantra, you, you're going to emanate light from you. And it, it's not visible spectrum light, but it's energetic light. You can feel others can sense it in you and see it in you. It's frequencies that, uh, are going to interact with the world around you and draw other people of light to you, other ideas of light, like the serendipity. And like, um, you're going to see things in the matrix, like palindrome numbers, same, same forward, same back. You're going to see, uh, things in the matrix, like, um, uh, synchronicity where like you talk about something and then you see a video that says that. And then a friend calls you and is like, Hey, I have a question. Uh, what do you think about this? You know, and it's like, whoa, the matrix is like, it knows like, and again, that's the spiritual matrix. The physical matrix is always going to like throw, uh, you know, fits about it, but you're going to eventually when you get better at practicing the spiritual side of things, uh, start to see like all of this serendipity. Uh, it doesn't mean life's always perfect by the way. Uh, but you're going to, you're going to see more and more and more of that and experience more and more and more of that light. So Dark night of the soul, uh, finally, uh, rupture my soul wanted to vanish for, uh, 28, 22. Oh, interesting. Kelly. 
uh yeah like i've gotten to those dark dark places before um and that's why i don't i don't do shadow work like a lot of these gurus online they do the shadow work go through all your negative experiences fully feel them try to relive them as a means to like get rid of them or something but for me it's bear more light and there can be no darkness like more, even the sinful nature that that i had before not that i still don't struggle with some but you know i mean we all do but i'm trying to bear more light and the more i focus on bearing more light or seek the kingdom first and all these things will be added to you um that's where i find a, a much better place a much more joyful lifestyle a much deeper welling of joy within me so uh holy spirit lets me know i'm here for a reason amen kelly amen well i'm glad you're here too thank you uh stay strong um and focus on the light focus on the light focus on the light uh almost four years of living in hell god would not let me go good 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 i i understand i've been there i've struggled heavily with things like addiction self-loathing um, not knowing my place in this world, not knowing my purpose. That's why I'm here doing what I'm doing, by the way. Um, I do this full time. This is my life. Um, and I'm, I'm so thankful to be able to do this. So, but guys, for me, it's all light. Like it's every day looking for the light, looking for, you know, how do I quiet the storms in my soul, finding God within myself every single day. And then I'm able to share that with you guys. How am I able to get up here twice a day and pour something new out every time? Because of him. Because of him. He's he's here. He's within me. And I can be one with the Father. He can be one with me. And I can be in that light and manifest that light. And you can too. And I think that that's what's beautiful about this. So, a again, as we look at Enoch, we don't know, we don't understand if it is fully um a mythology if it's oral tradition if it's like an esoteric understanding and i don't understand like why is leviathan and behemoth here and it's also in job and genesis so i don't know i mean it's interesting but now we know the origin of them they split from one it's kind of this evolutionary thing in my head almost like this you know the gods are like evolving this you know, on the earth. And then now you have these beasts that are ruling these wastelands, the wasteland of the water, wasteland of the desert. Um, again, what does that mean? You know, masculine, feminine, I don't know. Um, maybe one day I'll understand more and, and I'll share more. But for today, I wanted you to be aware that's where these beasts come from, or that's where this mythology is talking about as that, uh, on the day there were two monsters that were parted, a female monster and a male monster. Female is Leviathan, that great sea monster that dwells in the ocean and the fountains of the deep. And the male named Behemoth, who occupied with his breast a waste, uh, a wilderness named Duodon, on the east of the garden where the elect and righteous dwell, where my grandfather was taken up, the seventh from Adam, the first man whom the Lord of Spirits created. So... Um, that's where I'm going to end it today. Then we're going to get into the chambers of the winds tomorrow on, uh, actually it'll be Monday. So join me on Sunday live on Facebook and TikTok. I do a dual live stream then, and we're going to continue our esoteric reading of the gospels. Um, and I'm going to teach you guys more of how I read esoterically. We're literally just plugging away through it. Uh, I think we ended uh, in John chapter 1, verse 14 or 15. So we'll continue with that. Every Sunday, we're just doing like just meth, uh, just kind of a mythology, uh, a method reading of it, excuse me, um, to just kind of go through it, plug it verse by verse, and try to understand it esoterically rather than historically or religiously. Like, let's look at it. What does it mean to us? What is that internal story that's going on? with the gospel story. So if you guys want to check that out, come and join me for that. Thank you guys for being here. Uh, don't forget, I do have the monthly membership. If you guys are interested and you like my method and what I'm talking about, uh, you can go check out the mythos membership that stands for 
manifest yourself through holistic original spirituality. Um, and we do that through thoughts, emotions, actions, and energies. Uh, we have a library that I'm, I'm continuing to build out that you guys have access to uh, on my Odyssey channel that's private for this group. And uh, it is just literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of video trainings with me teaching the methods that I use that have led me to here to do this, to be able to just spin on stuff like this, to try to understand stuff deeper. And I literally go through and teach that right now. I'm releasing within that my book study for my book, God given gifts of brilliance. Uh, and it's me going through teaching lessons from that book, as well as you're going to get the, the book on video audio, um, through this so that you guys have access to that as well. So whether you bought the book already, you still get all of the extra trainings with it. Uh, we've got a private Facebook group for that exclusive virtual meetups, the Odyssey video library, early access updates, speaker sessions, free downloads and merch discounts on the mythos merch. So, uh, anyway, the mythos is kind of like our branded, uh, process here that we follow. So, um, that's what I teach from on the podcast, on the short videos, um, and then much, much, much deeper down the rabbit hole in the private group. So if you're not into the private group, um, and you're not looking for that quite yet, you can check out our, uh, Facebook group. Uh, it's the cub cooker supernatural podcast, free Facebook group over on cubcooker.com. You can get all of the goodies over there. I love you guys. Y'all have a beautiful day. I will see you on Sunday. Peace.